Tennessee's basketball team, to its benefit, will look similar and different this upcoming season. Why, Caleb? Well, it will look similar because Santiago Vescovi is returning for his super senior year, and having him is a way they look similar. It will look different because there should be a little bit better shooting on this team this year. Jordan Ganey, the assistant Co- the son of assistant coach Justin Ganey, the transfer from USC Upstate who joined Tennessee yesterday, is a 41% career three-point shooter. That's something Tennessee desperately needed is more shooting. So with Santi coming back and Jordan Ganey being added, Rick Barnes has at least another option to spread the floor a little bit. And quite honestly, that could outweigh Olivier Cumwa's departure. Interesting. Four downs, first down. Did Vescovi make the correct decision to return to Tennessee? I think so. I think so, because honestly, I think Vescovi, there were some really red flags last year with Vescovi that I think hurt his NBA draft stock. And you and I have talked about NIL money. He wasn't going to be a, he wasn't even going to be a, he definitely wasn't going to be first half of a first rounder and he wasn't going to be a first rounder. Yeah. So then you don't have a guarantee, guaranteed contract and the money's comparable. He absolutely made the, correct decision i appreciate the fact that he got a little bit of pub by posting this on twitter but this is barely news uh what is jordan Gaines worth jordan Gaines is jordan gainey. The, gainey excuse me uh jordan gainey what is what is he worth in terms of wins this upcoming season Ooh, i mean if we compare it to last year i think uh, jordan gainey on the team tennessee beats florida atlantic because that's an, again florida atlantic has to spread the floor a little bit more on defense so i think he's He's worth another round in the NCAA tournament, and he's worth another, I don't know, three to five ones. I I think, yeah, I think three to five easily, and I think they beat Florida Atlantic. I think if he's half the shooter that we believe he is right now, he's worth three to five. So I'll go three to five wins. That would put you in the realm of a two or three seed. And you would expect them to hit a couple of shots and beat a Florida Atlantic if they were in that position. So what does this tell you about Barnes' future? Third down. What does it tell you about Barnes' future? I think it at least suggests that Barnes is willing to adjust in his older age, which throws me for a loop. Never seen this before where somebody at like 67 decides, how old is he? 67, 66? Uh, 67, I believe. Okay. Decides, hey, I've decided to change my philosophy in basketball and I'm going to go this way. He's going for more shorter shooters. Now he hasn't lost his philosophy on defense. Jordan Ganey was, was a candidate for big South defensive player of the year last year. So he's still keeping his defense, but let's be honest, you're getting good Jordan Ganey because you need another outside shooter. And to be fair to him on this, I'm going to be fair to Rick Barnes on this. He thought he was getting that in Tyreek key last year, but Tyreek key couldn't buy a bucket in SEC play. And I think that in that shoulder injury from the year before he never recovered from. Yeah, the thing about Ganey that I, I find interesting, and when we talk about Rick Barnes' future, uh, he's the son of associate head coach Justin Ganey. Um, so Jordan Ganey is, is somebody certainly that Tennessee could use. But you're kind of at the point where instead of competing with the top schools for the top players, you're adding players via relationships. And it reminds me a little bit, of when uh, Tennessee hired Vincent Yarbrough's head coach. His name suddenly escapes me in high school. Basically, he was the travel director. He made sure the hotels were right and all that good stuff. And they took Del Baker, who ended up being a good player, but I didn't think would be at the time. To me, it doesn't tell me a lot other than Rick Barnes is feeling the pressure to get a championship on his resume before it's all said and done. So... That's why you take associate head coach Justin Ganey to get a Jordan Ganey. To me, it kind of reeks of desperation. Maybe he needs a little desperation. Rick Barnes' <laughs> stubbornness to his system has been the, the Rick Barnes' stubborn commitment to his philosophy has is why he hasn't taken that next step. So, I mean, a little bit of desperation is not a bad deal, not a bad idea. Well, maybe it's not. Um, so that was uh, third down. Let's get to fourth down. So I would say that about Barnes's future at reeks of desperation and then expectations now with Gaines, Visco, excuse me, Ganey, Vescovi coming back. And you would think at some point during the season, uh, you would have a healthy Sakai Ziegler. What are expectations for this upcoming season? Fourth down. What do you got? 
No better than last year. Second round of the NCAA tournament. And Dave, I'll tell you why. And I wrote about this. I encourage I encourage people. I'm going to do a shameless plug. Go to Off the Hook Sports to read my column about this. It's a good plug. Santiago Vescovi is not a return that's worth celebrating that much. I'm going to say this. And why? What do you? I, he was arguably Tennessee's best player last year. Santiago Vescovi is Tennessee's best player. He also wilts beneath pressure. He melts down. He doesn't, to quote Skip Bayless, doesn't have the clutch gene. He melts down. So now we saw Santiago Vescovi twice last year in back-to-back games, just needed to hit one or two free throws to clinch the game, and he missed them both times. This time around, he's coming back for a super senior year. Expectations are going to be on him like never before. And I don't think he is mentally tough enough to handle those expectations. So I think as far as you're going to have the offense go through Santi Vescovi, and I think Santi Vescovi is going to be a massive disappointment. And for those of you who disagree with me, look at his numbers this past year. Look at this numbers, his numbers this past year. Santiago Vescovi had a 30-point drop in his three-point shooting this past year as he was utilized more. He dropped – he went from okay. over 40% to 37%. Okay, but – it needs to be said that he was split between the one and the two after the injury. Um, Lucas free throws came b- b- well before Zachary Ziegler got hurt. I was and afraid to point that out. That's that is not going to. Th- there were like three games, maybe four, with Zachary Ziegler hurt that Sandy Viscovi played. Maybe three to five. I don't think those three to five games are what dropped his three point percentage from forty one percent to thirty seven percent. It didn't help. <laughs> I don't. You know what? I, I bet I could work at a three-point percentage that th- those few games. I bet it might be higher than a season average. He was not reliable from outside. Partially not his fault because part of this was teams were committed to guarding the perimeter, so he really never got open looks because nobody was really trusting Tennessee's interior. I, I, I grant you that. But if he's an NBA player, he should be able to hit threes with a, with a man in his face. I don't think Steph Curry cares when someone's in his face. 